Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> and I have to give my most sincere apologies at the top of this reading as I'm even like in in just on autopilot to cut the cards. This is the new moon message for Virgo. It actually was last night, um, last night around 9.55 my time, Eastern time. And for some reason, the date completely went over my head. I thought it was on the 4th. I think I was mixing up last month or something like that. Something, Some signals got crossed and where I was preparing to do the message today anyway, I didn't actually realize that I was late, late for work in poor Virgo form. <laughs> so this is the new moon message and reading. Please excuse my tardiness. And um, as usual, the timestamps will be posted in the description box and also in the comments below. But without further ado, we're just going to jump right into it since I'm already late, okay? <laughs> this is the new moon in Virgo message, all right? So again, the new moon occurred at on 9 September 2nd, 2024 at 9.55 p.m. Today, of course, is September 3rd, okay? The summer is winding down. And as I've said before, it feels like the fall is a beginning of a new year. As we make new resolutions that are set to optimize our efficiency and productivity, let's also not forget to incorporate, perhaps prioritize, self-care in our personal practices. With full Virgo support at this time, it may be easier to take inventory and identify some opportunities for advancement or improvement in your life. In fact, it may be almost too easy as Virgo can be a bit of a perfectionist. If you tend to veer more on the critical side of consideration or find yourself unusually drawn to that end of the spectrum during this transit, Try your best to be as constructive as possible. Take extra care to acknowledge what is working for you before diving headfirst into what is not, if anything at all. With a clear and objective analysis, you can apply recommendations as personally prescribed as often as needed. TLC could be most healing right now considering Many of us are fresh out of or are even still in critical condition. Be, care, be graceful and gentle with yourself and others. Avoid brutal honesty that can't be bandaged with love. The nuance we may seek in this new moon transit could come with a regeneration of relationships as we push through the post shadow of this intense Mercury retrograde. Yet it's important to remember that our external connections are reflective of our, of our internal one with ourselves. As we, as we fine tune that dynamic to our own personal brand of perfection, everything or one else can attract to that standard. Another way to magnetize your force field energetically is to purify the, sp the physical spaces that you inhabit. You can detox your mind with meditation or even your body with a cleanse. But dude, what about your car where you spend most of your time? And girl, look at that closet. Is it a wonderland or a wasteland? Now is a perfect time to get your life together in every way, shape, and form. You can still borrow some of that last moon, some of those last moon vibes, last full moon vibes to purge as needed, and then let Virgo be your guide to a more intentionally purposeful lifestyle that is organized and efficient. 
It's a reset to live your best life kind of transit, should you accept the invitation to do so. Just let your heart lead the way, even through the challenges of great change. A deep commitment to the work, whatever that means for you now, could be securing a lifetime of sheer satisfaction ahead. Find as many ways as possible to enjoy the profession of being you, as amazing as you already are, even as you're promoting and ascending yourself to a new level of excellence. Keep up the good work. Emphasis on good. All right, so that was the new moon message. Thank you for listening. We're going to jump right into it. <laughs> this is the new moon in Virgo reading. Now we're going to jump into it. <laughs> I'm all screwed up. It's like I'm, I'm on coming back from vacation and trying to get back into the swing of things or something. It's weird. It's real weird. All right, so let's get into it. Alrighty, hope you're having a magnificent day. If I didn't say that already, the week's off to a good start. If you had a vacation yesterday from work, then it's a short week for you. So that's always something good to look forward to. It'll be over before you know it. <laughs> or maybe you just love what you do so much that you're not in a rush, and that is amazing. God bless you. <laughs> All right, one more cut, and let's see what we got. Ooh, come on. That's how we starting? Five of swords? Hmm. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we got the five of swords which could be some, <sighs> hmm. maybe some intention to be, it's, it's like the, in, the intentions of a saboteur is what I'm sensing. <laughs> maybe even some, oh, here it is. Remember in the message that I said that Virgo can be heavy on the criticism. So we are embodying that energy through this transit. Some of us all don't need any help, particularly. And some of us, that's not really, you know, our wheelhouse. But because we are all um, conducive to the energy that is most pronounced at this time, which is Virgo season and a new moon in Virgo, that's the energy that we could um, we could project from the inside out or even be more sensitive to from the outside in, even in unusual ways, which is why there was a, a great deal of emphasis in the message to be gentle and be graceful with yourself and with others. Um, I can only speak to who I'm speaking to, but certainly we can't control those that may not be so privy to a message such as this or to the sensitivity of this time. So it would be just off the face value because this could be deeper, but where it relates to the um, integrity of the message, I would say this is emphasis again on just being careful about your criticisms unto yourself of others and also being very protective about what you um, ingest as a so-called gospel of truth at this time. You know, because of the heightened sensitivity, you could be a little harder on yourself than need be. And you could even take um, projections from others a bit more seriously or um, personally than they're even meant to be or certainly than they, you know, have right 
to make impact, okay? This is certainly the energy in the Five of Swords of, of what may be an intentional attack or at least um, a plan for an attack. And the reason why I zeroed in on it being in the form of criticism is because it's sword energy, which means it could be mentally. So it could be psychic attack. It could be mental um, aggression. Uh, it could be passive aggression to that point where little subtleties that people spew out are more projective of what they may be feeling for themselves or about themselves. And it somehow lands on you. If the 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 um, tricky part is that we're all super sensitive at a time like this, so where you typically may be um, more prone to deflect certain uh, aggressions in more sensitive times, it might be something that pierces through or 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 tries to anyway in an opportune moment. You know, so I guess just to be mindful of that level of sensitivity overall and to guard yourself accordingly. Guard your mind space, guard your heart space, guard your emotional space. Um, don't take yourself too super seriously and don't give too much leeway to others, you know, to impress upon you their insecurities um, it's, a, it's a good time to be proactive in the sense of just really um, supercharging yourself with affirmations at this time. Like, as I said in the message, you can be observant, you can be honest. I, I don't think you'll have a choice in many ways with Virgo uh, putting the pressure on you um, to be honest about what what is real in this moment. But you don't have to be hurtful, certainly not hateful to yourself or to anyone else. So you can guard your 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 art field with heightened um, affirmations and intentions to ground yourself in acceptance and in love and be graceful and as need be dismissive of any contrary um, frequencies that would seek to um, assault that. Okay, so there's that. Yeah, this is about sowing seeds for the long term, and that's where we are. This is a very important transit, which is why I was personally kicking myself a little bit. I was a little harsh on myself because I'm like, Danae, of all the entire year and, and plus more than now, because I've been doing moon messages before this channel when I was on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. You would pick this one to be late, <laughs> like the Virgo new moon in Virgo season. You would pick this one to be late, like, come on. So it's kind of funny, actually, when I got over myself. But it's this is an important transit. Um, the invitation that it extends to set some uh, life-changing habits in motion for yourself. Ha life-changing habits, rituals, routines to fine-tune um, anything of, of the nature that, you know, may need some, may need a revolution of sorts as you see fit again. But the outlook is for long-term security and prosperity. So it's not just about, like I said, like we're setting, making new new resolutions, right? But it's not like the typical way that we do at the top of the, the calendar year where you may or may not really follow through with those. Like you're going to the gym more and you're eating healthy and this and that. This is like setting yourself up for success in a very practical sense, things that you feel a heart connection to either initiate or um, evolve about your everyday routine that are, um, that are no doubt gonna make a lasting impression 
for the best, but also are going to be cultivated as a, a new way of life, not just a fad or something in the meantime, you know, or, or a quick fix to get to an idealized goal. And then, you know, you fall off back into the abyss again. The idea is to implement change that is sustainable if at all possible. And for some, that may be very aggressive. So don't let me hold you back. Maybe you want to be a vegan, you know, or maybe you, this is definitely speaking to like growth and, and um, like a cultivation. And, and that could be in a very actual sense. Maybe you want to start growing your own vegetables or fruits and you know, it could be a shift in your diet, which is very much in alignment with the Virgo habit of, you know, even caring for your health and your physical wellness. Um, maybe it could be purging the company that you keep to the point of the Five of Swords, like really take an inventory of the connections that you've been cultivating and, um, and maintaining and what of them is truly adding value to your life for the best and what you can project to be a long-term connection or not, you know, but certainly from the perspective of what's most valuable now, because sometimes we never know. It could be seasonal as to the disconnections that we're being called to initiate, but it matters to take that initiative now, um, as opposed to continuing the habit or um, the influence that is not most productive and it having a poor effect on your harvest moving forward. Because what we're projecting for now is beyond just this new moon to the next full moon or even Virgo season up until Libra. It, this is like long-term view, maybe even consider your next five to seven, five to 10 year plan. If you can, you can um, project that far, you know, certainly for the next year, at least consider what things that you like to set in place, almost like a pre New Year's resolution so that and trust me, I'm definitely preaching to myself on this because I'm not at all geared up <laughs> for the level of change and, and, and choices that I get to make that would truly be most pivotal, pivotal in the profession of who I am now. So I'm not preaching to you. This is just a suggestion, but certainly me being incorporated in this sound advice and sound suggestion that it could be a way to almost prime yourself for the new year, you know, like, so you're already in the practice of certain habits that are becoming, have become such a way of life that it's not like incorporating a new change or a new challenge altogether. Like once everybody else is turning over in 2025 and trying to whip themselves into some refined shape, you'll already be ahead of the game. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. Let's see what else we got. All right. Here's some competition. Oh, I don't like this. Now we got the five of wands and the five of swords. So this is like those, those resistances to the changes that you're looking to implement. And again, this could be inside out, which is reflective of the outside in or provoked. The inside out intentions may provoke a resistance from the outside in, whereas people that are um, intimidated or somehow agitated by your uh, your new new you new expression type of energy could be incited to create you know a disturbance or to be a disturbance or and I, I won't say they'll be successful, but they, there could be an incitement to want to do something to activate um, an aggression against you. Again, this could be passive. It don't feel all that passive, though. I ain't going to lie. This could be passive or this could be um, active. 
either way, the, the centerpiece here is you focusing on what you can control, which is your own personal intentions, your um, investments, your motivation, and not just, but certainly for now, but also for the future. So thinking beyond what may be a present um, challenge or, or uh, resistance in the moment, even the change itself that gets to be made on account of how you are looking to advance yourself in a productive way. That could even be the energy here, the, the, um, the mind space or the uh, mental outlook about the mentality, thank you, Lord, the mentality about what changes you see fit to make that may be a challenge is how I could read this as well. You know, that you could be, you, it could be even as simple as changing your mindset about the things that you feel incited or encouraged to do for the long term. Maybe not seeing them as a sacrifice as much as it is um, a submission or a surrender for your greatest good. Not that you have to eat a certain way or you have to work out or you have to change your social scenes or settings um, or that you even have to change your profession or your job or whatever, your daily routine, your spiritual practice, your self-care routine, whatever, but that you get to. Like that's another idea that momentum education reshaped for me, which I've spoken about many times before, is the difference between what you have to do and what you get to do. There's a stark difference of um, energetic influence and um, inspiration between those two. Because when you feel like you, you're doing something because you have to, you're much more likely to be resistant to it in the long run. Or for you not to just gain the most out of that change that could actually be for your best because your mind is not able to conceptualize it as um, added value for you in whatever way that gets to be. But when you get to do something, you see it as a privilege, maybe even an honor, you know, maybe even um, a right, you know what I mean? Like you're exercising your right to live well at all costs. And that has a different frequency that has even an energy of entitlement to it where nobody's twisting your arm. This is what you get to do for the advancement of you. You know, so just keep that in mind also as you're cultivating new habits um, and doing so with ease, you know, and and with the the greatest satisfaction that you can possibly connect to, I feel is the most productive energetic frequency. Yeah. So we can take it off of the energy of what's, ha again, like I said, a lot of times what's happening through us on the inside out is what can manifest from the outside in, where you may be resisting yourself or pushing back on yourself, being your own ops internally, you know, just a matter of how you're thinking about change or how you're thinking about how this new season gets to go. And, and lo and behold, that leaves way for materialized ops, even in human form or in um, circumstances to make an impression that's less desirable from the outside in. Um, but you can eliminate most of that by tempering what's going on within you, you know, so that even if, so that first of all, that cuts short what gets to exist outside of you, but certainly what gets to make impact. You know, you can't control people's intentions, but you can definitely control how you're affected by it, how you perceive it, or if you even perceive it at all, <laughs> quite honestly, in, in a lot of cases, okay? 
So let's see. Yeah, here's a new beginning. And this is, is the, like I said, this is the energy of entitlement. The best case scenario of the Knight of Swords that I can have in this case is to be, um, to have, to have like a, a very focused, almost tunnel vision, um, advancement toward a new beginning to whatever this fresh start, this new you, new opportunities, new routines, um, new disciplines, new guidance, new discoveries, new adventures gets to be like adventure being a, a, a key, an operative word, literally an operative word to allow yourself to experience life to revere life as an adventure and be adaptable for sure with the full card here to be adaptable to be a mean to be meaningable or amenable to be flexible <laughs> with change and also to the point to to be open-minded in the sense where you can idealize your focus but give life space to reroute you as needed because the routine that you may you may conceptualize as ideal and progressive may be due for a tweak or two or a fresher inspiration you know depending on the, the winds and twists and turns that this new road leads you down maybe you can't work out five days a week in the gym you know, maybe your workout routine is a bit more of a, of a variety than what you set out for it to be. And so therefore you could, you know, again, if you're on the more critical side of life, you could start to beat yourself down because you're not keeping up this five days a week routine. But maybe your spirit and your body is calling in something a bit more spontaneous than that a bit more of a variety maybe you get to hike on some days or bike on others and you're no less exercised and conditioned but it just may not be exactly what you proclaim it to be at the onset of your intentions so definitely be um open-minded yeah and look at this queen of pentacles i love this that the you gain the most from your intentions by allowing there to be um letting there be provisions for uh alterations or advancements you know like as you're taking inventory of what you need now and even what you project for yourself, especially if we're talking about years down the line, you know what I mean? What works for you in this moment to initiate this more prosperous state of mind and state of being could evolve down the road. And that's okay as long as the objective is still in view and also the value of the best of you is most protected. Yeah, I love that. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, take a few more. Let's see what we got here. All right, we got the eight of, sorry, eight of swords. Mm, pardon me. Eight of and the ace of cups. Yeah, like love, you know, self love is it, that TLC that I spoke of in the message. You don't want to confine yourself into these um, obligations and expectations that leave no room for error. That's the quickest way to feel disempowered. Like you can't do nothing right. And you know, observing yourself from the from the from the f space of criticism before it's just sheer consideration and 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 carefulness. You know, it's everything that you get to change happens by way of the frequency of love 
to, especially for it to be impactful and for it to be lasting. So anything that inside out or outside in that's projecting to you that there's something that you can't do or that you don't have the qualifications for, the aptitude for, the discipline for, you know, all of those resistive, resisting um, uh, frequencies that impair a premium um, evolution, you know, like where change is, is productive and prosperous. Again, like it's in the highest frequency, not a have to, but a get to. We can just, we can, we can lock those up. We can, we can exchange um, places, you know, like trade places with those energies. We can lock those away to never see the light of day again and allow ourselves to submit to the spiritual frequency of limitlessness that anything that you see fit for is is necessary for your ultimate wellness is possible it's more than possible it's probable or more more than probable it's paramount how about that with that knight of swords energy that it's a non-negotiable if it's good for you and it's within your reason to initiate and pursue, then it's a priority that you get to make of yourself and for yourself. Again, still being in the flow of universal order and loving yourself deeply um, at, the, at, the, at the core of your roots, where, you, where your soil is. That's the other thing about the Queen of Pentacles. That, that's a reference to soil because Virgo energy is very grounded energy. You know, it's very practical, tangible steps and intentions. But certainly from, you know, what do we need to grow most, most productively? Water, in this case, love. So can't be can't shortchange yourself on the love, the appreciation, the guidance. I mean the um, the acceptance and the nurturing that is necessary for even the purest of intentions to grow and to be productive, even beyond the sprouting moment. You know, meaning something that can be sustainable. So we're just going to do away with this eight of swords energy of disempowerment or feeling confined or contained in any way, shape, or form, even a physical limitation. But this really speaks to more of what's in the minds. Like again, that mental limitations, those mental limitations that we place on ourselves or that we willingly subscribe to, we're, we're done with that season. So cliche, but with God, all things are possible. Not really cliche, but you know what I mean. Really cliche is like anything is possible. Eternal is that with God, all things are possible for sure. But, you know, in the most practical sense, sometimes that can kind of go in one ear and out the other. Like, yeah, 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 I know. But it's time to really actually live that frequency, you know. Ooh, that three, yeah, that three of swords try to pop out. That old fear, that old shame and guilt, toxicity and trauma, probably the cause of such energies here. Mm -mm, it's back in where it's supposed to be. I, and I hope it don't come back out because that is one thing that we are certainly, we have laid to rest in the previous cycles. But as I said in the message, there's still time for releasing if as needed. You can never, it can never be an off season to release undesirable energy. So if you're finding yourself still harboring these um, issues of insecurity and um, even emotional instabilities that are residue from past seasons, you still have time to release it for your greatest good. Definitely. Even more so before you push yourself feeling like, oh, it's a new moon, I gotta do something new, I gotta start something fresh. Hell, take your time, ain't no rush. If there's some things that still need to be purged from your auric field, 
you would be most productive in doing that than trying to like stuff new energy into um, an old vessel or in, in an old um, force field, you know, that still may need a little bit of dusting here and there. It's all right. It's all right. I definitely encourage in a practical sense, um, ladies and gentlemen, although I definitely catered it to the ladies, <laughs> um, purge your closet. And um, I have some very practical steps on how that gets to be that I may share in this season. But they say, you know, when you want to change your life, clean your closet. And that could be your clothes closet, that could be your linen closet, it could be your, uh, I don't know, your coat closet, <laughs> your kids' closets, and don't leave them out because they're part of this this as well. But whatever you do for you, I, I suggest, as I do as a mom, you do it for your children too because they're an extension of your energy. They matter just as much as the little people that they are. And... Um, you know, if you're sharing a space, particularly a home, then everybody's energy is effective on the others. So it doesn't matter to cleanse your closet and your kid's closet is still a mess or vice versa, where some of us take care of our kids first and then ourselves. Either way, that's the best place to start to make some change, to clear some energy from past seasons, particularly clothes that you're not wearing anymore, um, things that you don't even like to see yourself in, maybe things you can't even fit. <laughs> and I just gave you a couple of my principles right there off the top. Um, you're welcome. But um, yeah, cleanse that, or even this past season, you know, summertime, we're get, not quite finished yet, but from my outlook of the weather, it doesn't seem like we're going to have too many super hot days unless, of course, you live in a hot climate year round. But you may even start to prepare to pack some of those things away, you know, unless you're going on vacation or something. Um, but yeah, start with your closet. And of course, I feel like men can relate more to the car if you can't to the closet. But of course, it's interchangeable, um, not sexist at all either way you know because sometimes women can keep a funky car too <laughs> so cleanse those spaces that are most intimate i mean your closet is where you start your day to put on your your um your like what do you call it like your your war garments you know to head out into the world what is it called your armor yeah your armor to head out into the world and to feel your most confident and secure starts from that space first. Um, and of course, your car, for many people, you spend a lot of time in transportation and carrying one energy from, from one place to the next and so on and so forth. So you want to be clear to cleanse those spaces that you engage the most and that have the most Im impact and impression on your wellness so that that reflection in that space can um, be inspirational or impressionable to your inner well-being, you know, your internal well-being. Like you may still be getting some things together on the inside, but to operate through a functional closet that's clearable energy or in a car that's clean um, where you can do some some thinking and some brainstorming without interference, you'd be surprised how how um, healing that can be to actually like do some shifting on the inside of you that is easier said than done, you know, or at least supports you in that energy or that intention, I should say. That was a Ten of Swords trying to come up. We're definitely putting it into some things. Yeah. 
And here is this, this is, this can be about conserving your energy, um, but it could also be about holding on to things that are no longer serving you. So it, whichever it is, there's nothing wrong with conservation, for sure, being frugal with how you spend your time, your money, your attention, um, you know, your influence, your talents, your gifts, your expertise, whatever it is that's precious to you, there's definitely that piece of it to be conservative um, and to be conscious of your input and output, you know, but also surely next to this eight of swords, being mindful of perhaps even ideals that you're holding tight to that don't really add much value to your life anymore. Maybe even habits that don't add much value to your life anymore. Outside influences that don't yield much of a return anymore. Consider what are you holding on to it for? Like, what is, are you saving something for later? Saving it for a rainy day or just in case or because you want to solidify some sense of security that may not really be, um, that may, you know, may not be pure, let's say, you know, or, or organic. Yeah. Yeah, let's see what's on the bottom. Yeah, well, here's a decision maker right here. Very objective. Very objective mindset. Not too emotionally attached. And not also too emotionally detached either, I like to say. with Because it still is feminine energy with the Queen of Swords. So there's still some undercurrent of... 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 Intuition and emotionality and things but incorporated in a very practical sense you know like still prioritizing what um is most objective in your choices and your decisions more than what is uh, sentimental you know so that could be key in terms of even the practical aspect of cleansing your space cleansing your closet, cleansing your car, cleansing your relationships, cleansing your life. You know, what of it are you still holding on for sentimental value, even for a false sense of security and comfort that really doesn't hold weight, you know, that really, you, that you really can't make a justifiable case for at this time. This is like a lawyer. You know, that's really going to be quite intentional, you know, like sticking to the facts and the figures on each case that is presented, you know, not having to necessarily build a case for something that is just not defendable, you know, like by, for all intents and purposes that has no grounds for defense you know it's time and this is also about being honest with yourself in all those accounts you know so but you know and also <laughs> with the queen of swords this definitely breaks this energy of disempowerment where you can absolutely trust yourself to make the best decisions for yourself and you stand on that truth you stand on that profession and you are asserted in that in that reality, in that position. You know, you're not letting anybody else take the reins for you or tell you even what you have to do or what you shouldn't do. You may be open to suggestion as the Queen of Swords can be, but when it comes down to it, it's your decision that is final. So this just could be, you know, a brief stint of grief or mourning 
of the things that you get to release, but still nonetheless being comforted by the liberty of your choices and also the um, most positive projection of why you get to make the choices that you are and what they yield in the long run. So you could even be mourning eating meat, <laughs> you know, or eating processed sugar or, you know, the things that make life so delectable sometimes. <laughs> but you, you know, you soothe yourself, you comfort yourself with the peace of knowing that it's for your, your greatest good. Yeah, the justice card, that it's all fair. You know, like I said, what, what can you truly build a case for? And what is just guilty as charged? And as I said, this is like spiritual imprisonment. What needs to be banished to its own confinement? You know, lock, lock the gate and throw away the key type of energy at least from your position as it is now like don't again don't put too much pressure on yourself to you know just be so resilient that you never want a, another donut again in your life because that just might not be realistic you know um but also you know and also give yourself the space to you know, gracefully make the changes that are necessary because it's not just a matter, like kind of like you would in grief, you know, like not to put a complete damper on the message, but you wouldn't necessarily have the expectation for yourself to bounce back in an instant. You know, there, even if you're good one day, there could always be a memory that provokes you to um, nostalgia, you know, and to, to, to a different mood that you would you would rather be most evolved from but in the most practical sense give yourself the space to maybe perhaps to mourn your past self mourn the identity um of yourself that you have already decided fairly is no longer um taking the lead in this next leg of your journey. Give yourself the time to, to grieve that passing and really not so much in a sad sense, but really in the transformative sense of allowing yourself the space to evolve, you know, and to really cement this identity in the practice and continued devotion to it by way of these changed habits or intentions, you know? Yeah, it's like, it's like really forming a new covenant with yourself, you know, new, new legislation, new rules, new, um, a new, new, uh, what's the, what was the ten, commandments, new commandments. Oh, I like that. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. New commandments for, a new lifestyle or new commandments for an evolved consciousness. That's what it is. That's deep. Mm -hmm. So as you're mourning the things that are withering away, passing away, it's, it's a fair transition in the most practical sense. Let it be. You have to let it be, not force it. Because as I said, when you try to, you know, I don't know, like uh, manhandle yourself into something that your entire being needs time to settle with. You can create a resistance to the longevity of that creativity that didn't need to be otherwise if you would just allow yourself to go with the flow. Mm -hmm. This is good money. All right, a couple more. Mm. 
the king of, wow, the king of swords and the lovers. Now we got the most proactive decider on the board. The brains of the operation for your motivation. <laughs> Maybe the one that is most strategic in how this evolution of change of being, you know, this is the profession actually of your identity here. And this is either the inspiration or the aspiration with the lover's card. I love that. But this is like the, the focus, the fury of intention, um, the, again, the strategy, the, what's that other word I like with swords? Um, I guess we could say, well, would I say ingenuity? Yeah, I guess I would say ingenuity. Um, yeah. And I love how it's next to the lovers because it also gives way to the inspiration of the divine. Again, as I said before, to refine your ambitions. So you can have the best foolproof plan of, of intentions that your intellect can construct. Yet you surrender and submit yourself to a higher frequency, a higher calling here with the lovers. There's a greater aspiration to um, to subscribe to or to, to, to be inspired by before you fully realize it, particularly in the physical sense or, you know, in the physical expression. So you have to give way for the refinement of your plan to really fit that identity, you know, to, to be fine-tuned in a way that aligns with who you conceive and project yourself to be in your most supreme nature. Yeah. So basically, don't be too smart for your own good, that you can't take some constructive criticism, but of a divine source, more or less, from the inside out, of course. But even that, again, it, refining how it is that you may even um, critique yourself should be coming from this ideal of supreme expression or supreme... Um, what's the right word, uh, observance, you know, like not just who you are amongst your peers or who you are considering where you thought you might be at this point, particularly as a measurement of by societal standards or by um, projections that are imposed upon you even that you may have, of course, subscribed to or, or um, accepted in some way, shape, or form. I feel like it's important to say that for some reason, that this is about a forward projection, maybe even an altogether cleansed perspective of yourself in an, in an evolved way that has never, in this lifetime at least, been realized before. So therefore, you couldn't have all the answers of how that gets to be even with your best intentions. Give space for evolution's sake. Mm -hmm. Evolution for revolution. <laughs> I don't know how to spell that. King of Cups and the sensibility to this is, again, return to that loving space, though, and being very proactive about it and intentional to continue to har harbor that, um, you know, facilitate that frequency. But 
certainly to feel your way through just as much as you think your way through. Mm -hmm. And maybe even, as I said in the message, leading with your heart and allowing your mind space to just um, like refine your, your intuitions for a practical plan of action, you know, or uh, a more um, practical perception or outlook of how it, how it gets to be, but certainly it being the origins of what is of your heart's desires purely, you know, with the best intentions and with the most ideal expression of your supreme self at your, um, as your, as your inspiration. Did I say inspiration already? <laughs> like upholding that ideal of yourself, which is a compilation of all the things, the, the cups of you, the emotion of you, the spirit of you, the mind of you and the intentions that you bear, the passion and drive behind and, you know, the force and creativity behind your actions and then the materialization, like what actually evolves to be of all of those things. What is tangible? What is the result of your spiritual nature? You know, like how does it all trickle down in the three in the three D from the spirit to the man? All of that is taken into account here in the in, in the intention of the lover's card that like that being almost like the ideal mm -hmm. and that in itself could be evolving and ever changing as continuing to ascend and expand as you reach one um, milestone or plateau seemingly you find that there is yet another ascent to make you know, which is why there needs to be room for yourself to evolve and for your perspective of life and of yourself to change and for the universe to co-create through you and with you in a way that is prescriptive for whatever is the greatest good of all in that time, at that time, you know, in the moment of which your most effective, impactful, and impressionable to creation. Starting with you, of course. All right, just a few more. Yeah, King of Cups. I forgot I, if I saw that card underneath. A few more and then we out share. There's a Queen of Swords again. Okay, okay. Definitely the power of decision here. But being considerate of of counsel, of influences, of even inspiration that could add value to, you know, your, um, to whatever it is that you initiate, you know, and up under the four of pentacles, it's definitely given, Emphasis on the, this feminine energy here. Um, yeah, it's something about the mind being like the womb, you know, like being again to be careful of what thoughts you're holding on to, what ideals you are and that you are. Um, that you subscribe to, being extremely, um, hmm. yeah, something about projections here, you know, and, and being very intentional about cleansing what is not yours. You know, you may take inventory of your mind space and the identity that is being projected from that space and realize that there are some things that just aren't true for you anymore, that don't make sense or that may not even matter to you. 
maybe they did in a season, or maybe you accepted that they did at a time, you know, because it may have been beneficial or even created a sense of security to maintain that ideal. But now as a queen of swords, you certainly get to be like almost um, maternally protective over your mind as a womb space, you know, that, that for that a very fertile, actively fertile, um, energetic field for, for how you get to evolve and how, like what gets to be projected, you know, literally delivered in a practical sense in a very physical and three-dimensional sense. So if you're still holding on to habits and things and people and places and ideas and falsehoods, misunderstandings, illusions about you, first and foremost, that would desecrate that womb, those would be the first things to purge. And that, again, could be by way of limitations you place on yourself or agree with um, or insecurities about what you're capable of or what you're worthy of, um, even about what you've done in the past or achieved in the past and how that somehow translates to what's possible now. Returning back to the ideal that with God, all things are possible. And if you don't subscribe to that, in the spiritual or religious sense, it's really, it really does come down to whatever you can aspire to at the highest um, state of being, even if that's within yourself. And certainly if it's a, a matter of the, the aspiration of something better than what you are now, what you perceive yourself to be. If we can't equate it to God, universe, source, whatever, the intangibilities of creation, um, then certainly you can bring it, you can, you can levitate that seal into wherever is most um, secure for you or practical for you, and it still would amount to being conscious of what you allow to contain you and what you shackle yourself from ascending into, either way you look at it. And that means what could even be holding you down or weighing you down from that levitation, from that ascension or transcendence from at least the least of what you ideal yourself to be or or um, of what you uh, desire yourself to be in real time in in human form you know I hope that makes sense because I don't be wanting to leave nobody out yeah and here's the page of wands it's like again perceiving it all as a new adventure as a a delightful invitation, you know, to be teachable, to be um, influential in all the right ways, you know, to be impressionable by uh, pure creativity from the inside out and the outside in. This is that energy here, like with the Page of Wands to the Queen of Swords, that's saying that you can be inspired in the small ways and in the grand ways and it could still make all the difference in how you actualize your identity. So you're never too smart or too grand or too evolved or too spiritual or too religious or too old or even too young to, to advance, you know, or to, for your life to be enhanced. Yeah, this is good. Two more and we out. Oh man, is that too? Yeah, it is. Oh wow, look at this. Never to nothing to be advanced. Thank you, Spirit, for the confirmation. 
And this is like, I mean, this is a power forward. And I love that it's kind of falling up under this um, five of cups. You know, it's lining up with that perfectly because it definitely speaks to the resilience that you must have, that you must embody already to forge ahead in a very powerful way. This is the willpower here, as a matter of fact. Thank you, Spirit, for bringing that to mind. This is the willpower, the focus, the drive to overcome any obstacle that you've already done so. But in in this new sense of, um, of advancement, that there is never a challenge too great for you to overcome, maybe even defeat in some instances to come out as a victor and come out successfully on top. And that could be inside, that could be outside. There literally is no worthy opponent when it comes to you and your alignment with supreme um, inspiration and even divine, um, well, let's say supreme aspiration and even divine inspiration. That's probably more palatable for some of you. <laughs> and look, here is the advancement, the accelerated advancement in the Eight of Wands. That the moment you decide that this is who you are already right now in the present tense, the, the forces of nature and celestial powers, even if you, if you believe it to be so, have to, by the laws of nature, align with your forward movement like it's it's magnetic it this force attracts to you in the profession of this frequency before it even happens again the purging of the things that kind of take the wind out of your sail or weigh you down from this trajectory or ascension whatever however you want to look at it and then reestablishing an identity that is um, grounded in pure creativity and in, you know, of course, fueled by the energy of love and understanding at a soul level, you know, for yourself before you're even looking for it anywhere else. That's the attractive force that the universe must yeah, it's not even that it has to by order, like the justice card, even though there is, it is lawful, but it's like also a pleasure, you know, it like it, it wants to co-create. It's a seeking <laughs> throughout all of creation to find an energy that it can conduct through and be um, that it can be conducive with, first off, and conduct through. It's looking for that. You know, this is, like I said, what I say? Um, evolution for revolution. This is the force of co-creativity between um, spirit and man that evolves creation forward and onward and upward otherwise it just stays stagnant just as you do when you decide to refuse change resist challenge to stay stuck in patterns with people places and things that you can observe and and build an honest case for um an expiration upon or uh, you know, a depletion and in influence or, you know, whatever, however you want to see it most diplomatically, that does, just doesn't serve you in the, in the frequency that you aspire to evolve in or just aspire to assert in real time. That's how you keep yourself from getting, you know, from finding yourselves in this wind of change that almost happens you know, seems to happen supernatural, seems to supernaturally advance you in ways that you 
you, you'd probably think would never be possible, you know, except that you, it was possible through you on account of the decisions and the intentions that were made on a physical level from a soul force. It couldn't have happened any other way. The spirit doesn't just come move you in, in any progressive way that you actually like. <laughs> We're talking about satisfaction here, not just getting pushed into places that you, you go kicking and screaming. We're talking about being pushed in the ways that you already aspire to be so. Even if the change and the shift that gets to happen between uh, here and there, you know, is a challenge, this is still what you've called in, you know, by just your intention <clears throat> to align with what is required of you or what is um, less required, but more, uh, um, what's the right word, um, requested of you, you know? This is, I mean, that that's the baseline. I kind of got lost in my thoughts, you know, that you would have needed to surrender and submit to that ideal um, oh, so I was saying that you don't just come get pushed into prosperity and pushed into um, love and pushed into peace, um, your your life's purpose and passion. Like it doesn't really, I don't believe that it happens that way um, in such a progressive way that you feel endeared by upon arrival um, without your acceptance and um, what's the word, your agreement, I think is the word that I'm looking for. Yeah, your agreement. Now you can be pushed and it be an unfavorable experience. Like I said, kicking and screaming all the way and still could get to your so-called destination or to a land and place and be wondering why and how you got there and have no acceptance for it at all. And sometimes that's on account of the resistances that we've ascribed to internally when change was staring us in the face. Like, I didn't ask for this type of thing, but in fact, you kind of did. Just on the profession of who you desire and aspire to be, you, you ask for, and the universe is, is sure to oblige, but without your acceptance and agreement with that process, it could either be quite favorable and enjoyable, or it could be a nightmare. And that even that is up to your choice and your discernment. You know, but either way, with this, with the this is saying that you're empowered to make the choices that are best for you. And you have enough evidence of the past and now even of the present to know that you are more than qualified to operate in that authority because you're here, you know, having overcome great feats and, and um, surpass, you know, uh, achieved in, in highly, um, at difficult situations and circumstances. And now here you are in the Eight of Wands, just getting ready to let the wind beneath your wings carry you on to the place that you've aspired to in your dreams. And I bet you had no idea could occur and be uh, realized in such an accelerated time as you are about to experience. So hold on to your butts, ladies and gentlemen. Just let this transit be transformative in all the ways that it gets to be. But certainly, you're going to be quite pleased with who you realize yourself to be and what you realize yourself to experience and encounter on the other side. And this is for all the marbles, not just for now to the next season. This is something that can be sustainable, attainable, and um, magnified in even the most material sense 
for years to come. This is like you're making a, a, a solid investment in your retirement plan, but not in the sense like, oh, when I'm old and gray. No, this is the way that you get to retire that old jersey of struggle and strife to turn over into a new life of, of ease, ultimately, of ease and of... Um, I just share satisfaction, as I said in the message, in the way that you can conceive of it, which will be different than what my idea of share satisfaction is. But the point is, is that it just as attainable as it is for me is the same as it is for you. Because what? With God, all things are possible. And here we go. The four of wands, there's the balance, there's the achievement, there's the, you know, the retirement in your forever home or on your private island or wherever place you idealize to be the ideal life for you, but not at the end of a long, you know, of toil and labor. This is the idea that the toil and labor has not all, not all, not not only has it already occurred and the devotion and dedication that you and commitment that you've made to yourself thus far, but it's happening in real time in a very like, um, like in an incubated, accelerated way throughout this next transit where what you're setting up, you know, the outlook may be that it's something that could take years or decades to achieve. But in fact, it's like you're setting up the reality of your existence moving forward. It doesn't mean that you won't continue to do the work or work at all, but it means that what you now are setting up for yourself is quite possibly working in the purpose that you love to operate in, doing what you love, being who you you know, always desire to be Re receiving the rewards in real time, you know, and actually in, um, in a very, uh, like, um, in dividends is ultimately what I mean. Like the hard work that you're putting in and returning and receiving that return in dividends exuberantly more than even what you, you, the blood, sweat, and tears you put into it, that's the lifestyle that you're creating for yourself. One that is satisfying and enjoying throughout the journey, not just with the ideal of some end result or even some heaven after after, heaven ever after per se, where your reward is not until you've toiled to the bone. No, you get to have it in real time right now. And this is accessible for anyone that is dedicated to the work that it takes to secure it. And it's, it's no set time frame of what that gets to be. It's just about the commitment to seeing it through. So, four of wands. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> of course, not limited to the wife aspect, but hell, on either side, if you the husband or the wife or whatever, you know what I'm saying? You can, you can, you benefit from that expression as well, clearly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like everything gets to be in peace. In prosperity, in joy, literally in joy. All right, so I'm gonna leave it there because it's already long enough. But remember, you it's time stamped, so maybe you watch the message first, come back to the reading later, vice versa. But I definitely would tap into either one, especially since the message isn't that long. But in any event, um, happy new moon to you since we're already in that frequency of the transit. 
Uh, definitely govern yourselves accordingly. Again, be gentle and graceful with yourself going through these changes and try to enjoy the transition as much as you possibly can. It's all joy from here on out. And you can decide to activate that reality right now. I pray it be so for you and yours in spirit and in truth. And so it is. All right. So thanks for listening and watching. Until next time, as always, I leave you with peace.